Well, I got two tags in my pocket this week and we are heading out to legendary buck country. We're going to Illinois to hunt great big whitetails with the guys from Campbell Cameron. Going out to the third leg of top producer. Rolling out of Virginia, we got a 10 hour drive and me and Josh is gonna go ahead and win this thing, I think. Like you saw earlier in the season, we did a mule deer challenge. This hunt marks the third and final leg of this competition. I feel confident if we can kill at least one deer, we've got a shot, and if we kill two, it's it's all over with, with the grind. We compete against a lot of the top outdoor producers in the industry for cash prizes and the bragging rights to be able to say that you are the top outdoor producer. Putting the big lights of Carmi behind us and coming into Campbell Whitetails right now. You know, this is a spot in Illinois I'd never hunted before. The Campbells have just a tremendous amount of land out there. They've got a great facility, an awesome place to hunt, and I was really looking forward to not only getting out there and going after a big deer, but getting to see all our buddies from Buck Commander and Jacob and Phillip, and it's just us all getting together, having a good time, and then, you know, whoever wins in the end, that's that's sort of secondary. We're here in Carmi, Illinois for the third leg of Top Producer. It's, uh, my hat blew off, didn't it? You know, we knew it was gonna be tough when we got there because the wind was gusting upwards of 50 miles an hour, it felt like, and, you know, the first four days of this competition, it's bow season, and the last four days, it's gun season. We're gonna go ahead and get ready to start. Mike, tell you? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, we're gonna draw for our areas, which means we're gonna have a duel in the parking lot. Well, on the first day we draw our area, we get a designated spot to hunt and a backup location to hunt. And I was pretty pleased with our area. I mean, we went, scouted around, saw a lot of good deer sign, and, uh, you know, we got ready for that first day of hunting. Right now, just a little bit after sun up. As you can tell, the wind's blowing super hard. It's 40 mile an hour gust today, which makes archery hunting obviously kind of a difficult task, as if it wasn't hard enough already. We've got a little thicket out in front of us, and uh, it looks like a smoking spot, man. I mean, it's a little uh, dry slough behind us. Anyway, we got winds out of the south, so bucks will be cruising this side of it checking does, scent checking does that are in there. And uh, hopefully we see some chasing, get a big old buck and get love stick and come by this trail right here. yards and, and only had about that much of a window to shoot. End of day one wasn't that great. So I want shooter buck. I mean it was pretty good but just the weather. No, I swear it was 50 miles an hour winds today if it was a you know mile an hour wind. You can't really keep me and Josh down. We're gonna have a good time no matter what. Especially when our good buddies Philip and Jacob are there and the prank war is still very much alive. I guess popcorn and a Corona and some underwear. <laughs> Hopefully they're clean. Hopefully they're clean. Baby Gap. Yeah, Philip and Jacob, so. Baby Gap. Um, we'll see, we'll see how it all turns out for them. I just don't think they know enough about me to know that I'm not going Quit. I'm, I'm not going to lose. Filling a man's lunch with popcorn and somebody else's underwear is just, well, frankly, amateur. What we have here is a $1.99 worth of chicken livers. They're really good for catfishing. And if you leave them anywhere for an extended period of time, they're really good at making you dry heave. So we're going to go put these under Philip and Jacob's bed or other interesting places. So, you know, if you're going to hang with us, you better check in. Chicken livers. 
I play dirty. Whatever we got to do, we're going to get it done. Yeah, okay. We can, get your your gift. We, should, we can gift wrap it for them. You know, if, get your tape. All the contents of their lunch will be taped together in a tight, neat ball, and I'll glue <laughs> the tops of it together. And, I mean, this is just, this is more like extra credit. Is the prank that we got brewing, let's just say. All right, we are finally, finally heading to the stand. We uh, took a little gamble today and spent a lot of time on our production element, so hopefully it'll pay off the rest of the week. We'll be able to hunt a little bit harder. Well, the weather's finally lifted. Saw two real good bucks today, chasing does. Seems like it's starting to turn on a little bit in this particular spot. We had a couple bucks come right under the tree stand, but the bigger ones stayed just out of range or either just in a spot where I couldn't shoot them, so. We're seeing some good deer. We just can't quite get them in the bow range. I mean, they're in bow range, some of them, and just with no shooting lane or they're at the wrong angle or, you know, it's just typical bow hunting. If we don't see any change in the deer's pattern, we're gonna move the stand 100 yards up to the next trail. Um, one more evening to hunt. So this is it, man. This is the last day of bow season. Be really good if we could get a deer today because then we go into gun season with one under our belt, that many more points over everybody else. So you try to get a deer today. We try to get a deer every day, but today's the last day, so we gotta get one today. We've been hunting this spot all week. Seen a lot of good deer. Just can't get a mature buck in bow range. They're all around us. They just don't wanna walk down this trail for some reason. Probably because they're smart. <laughs> well, one of the big shooter 10 pointers that we've been seeing came in within bow range. But he was in that thick stuff and I could never get a shot at him. I mean, he walked five steps on the other side of where I can't shoot him. I mean, I don't even have a single shooting lane out there. And he, uh, he was gonna cross the road right here 50 yards, but then he turned and went away and he crossed down there at about 90 yards. And uh, just can't catch a break. If it was gun season, we'd be tagged out, but tag on it. He just strolled right on through here and the deer been doing the same thing every day. They've been either taking that trail or the one on that side of us. But these big bucks, they they're sticking to those two trails. These uh, these deer that are walking out at 50 yards are gonna get a trip down Waxahachie Boulevard for sure tomorrow. I mean, they're going down because you know it's just not fair for them to walk down the wrong trail every day for four days. But now, deer, it doesn't matter if you walk down the wrong trail because I'm gonna shoot you in your shoulder and you're gonna run away like this and you're gonna die. It's the second to last day here at the challenge, and uh, you know, me and Josh are heading out to a box blind. It's been a good hunt, but it's been a frustrating hunt because we just can't get anything in range. Now we've got the gun, and then yesterday we didn't see anything to amount to anything, so it's been pretty frustrating. A kill today would mean a whole lot to us. I mean, not only for the competition, but for Red Arrow TV. We, we hit a dry patch here lately. We got set up in the box blind. We've got two, pretty much two big shooting lanes in the middle of the thicket that we've been seeing all the deer in. I'm excited about it, but I'd be really excited if we had some food plots out here. 
it's just all, you know, CRP grass or whatever. So, I don't know. I mean, they're going to travel through it probably, but I'd really like to get something out there that they could sort of stop and be interested in for a while so Josh could get plenty of pre-roll. But Unlike our food plot, Philip and Jacob's was nice and green and tall. A monster, monster buck shows up in their food plot. There's no way I just missed that deer. Everything was there. Two camera angles. A lot of pre-harvest pre footage, no obstructions. That was everything we needed. And we just screwed it up. I just screwed it up. But when they got back and they shot this gun, it was dead on the money. And it was looking like it was the Indian and not the arrow. It's on. Oh my God. And it actually turns out in this case, Jacob only put one pellet of powder in it as opposed to two that it was sighted in with. So that bullet didn't have the oomph to get there that it needed. He might've made a great shot, but he didn't put enough powder in his gun. One thing about this competition that will make you think before you shoot is the fact that all deer have a minimum Boone and Crockett score that you have to meet. Eight pointers, it has to be 125 inches or better. 10 pointers, it has to be 140 inches or better, or it doesn't count. And on top of that, the guide service has a thousand dollar fine for any deer that are killed under the minimum requirement. this season if I shot that book. He's a 10 pointer. What do you think? Zoom in on him. He's got to be 140. 135 probably, isn't he? That's what I'm saying, but he's, he's probably 135. Gotta be 140, and then the eight pointer's gotta be 125. Top producer trying to keep her brother down. I just wanna kill something. I don't need all these rules. Now, I don't know about y'all, but hunting is expensive enough, and then going back to your wife and saying, oh yeah, on top of the license fee and the travel and the gas and everything we spent to get out here, uh, you know, I, I shot a deer that was too small, and now you're gonna have to write these people a check for $1,000. I'm not bringing that drama home, no thank you. Rules are made to be broken but not this time, because we want to win. You know, we get right down to the last day, and 
and the competition is pretty close in this leg and and uh we knew most of the guys hadn't killed it had been kind of tough hunting for everybody and at this point if we could just kill a deer we felt like we had a chance So it's the last day, it's raining again. And Josh and I are looking out this one window. We've been seeing some deer activity to our right. And sure enough, man, the seven pointer crosses downrange at about 170 yards. And he's only in the lane for a split second. Man, just like it was meant to be, I thought this buck was gone. And he steps out in our best shooting lane, but he's only there briefly. And he starts slipping into the brush where I can't get a shot. Josh, man. We're gonna find out what that buck scored after all. That's a 130 inch deer, I think. Come on, baby. Nice job, buddy. Nice job. How did we get him shot? You know how? It was all part of God's plan because I've been talking to him all day long. <laughs> like, Lord Jesus, please, we need this, not just for, we're not being greedy. You know, we're not being greedy. It's not just about killing a deer for us. It's oh, this is our livelihood. This is what we do for a living, and it's all, you know part of the competition. All right, we saw the deer go down on video. It was a mad scramble in that little box blind man. It was. I kicked the chair out of my way, and he was getting out of there, and he got in some brush. It's the last late last day. Whew, thank you, Lord. He's right up here. He fell over. Go look at that jerk, baby. We, we talked to everybody last night and they were saying, you know, half the people said he'd make it and half said he wouldn't. So we had a 50-50 shot of him scoring. And it was the last day and we needed a buck. And uh, there he is, man. What a deer. Good main beams. I'm proud of him. I love him, man. Kill shot for our TV show, man. It helps us out. Cool looking deer. Man, we had a lot of fun on Rams Red Arrow today, getting to see our friends and hang out in camp with some good guys. And, you know, Top Producer was one of the best experiences we've had in this industry. And I cannot wait till it comes on TV next year. Unfortunately, I can't tell you how my buck scored or how we placed or who won the whole thing or anything like that. You're just gonna have to wait till it comes out next season. Usually we are only going out to Illinois for one thing, and that's to kill big bucks and put back straps in the freezer. That's two things. <laughs> I whip my tree back and forth. I whip my tree back and forth. Called America's Top Producer. That's not what it's called. Yeah, I was like, dude, if I cock the hammer, I'm killing it. I'm not cocking the hammer. Class you know, it says I want to be formal, but I'm also here to party. At least finish putting on my face paint so I don't look like a left eye. I don't, I don't want to be singing Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls. A quadruple cheese and mustard and lettuce. No ham in there. Oh yeah, what are you gonna do with that price money? And you can't say by the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'd buy a million dollar bow. 
Yeah, but I'd still out shoot you. Yeah, but I'd activate my bow's explosive rockets and blow everything up. <laughs>